Now, I hope you've had a chance to watch the Europeana video on linked open data. And if you haven't, go watch it now. Really, it's, it's short. And if you have watched it, that's good because now you know that linked data relies on RDF. So let's revisit RDF briefly here. So remember that RDF is constructed of what's called triples. The subject, object, and predicate is, in RDF jargon, called a triple. Now, the object is the thing you're making the statement about, the resource being described by a metadata record. In this case, the Mona Lisa. The subject is the characteristic of the object, the thing that you're saying about the object, the value of that description. For example, Leonardo da Vinci. And the predicate is what you're saying about the relationship between the subject and the object. Leonardo da Vinci is the creator of the Mona Lisa. The element, in other words, of the metadata record that establishes what the relationship is between the object and the subject. Creator is the relationship there. Now, part of the point of RDF is that it can create a network of relationships, not just triples, but whole networks. Now, a network in computer science and information science jargon is called a graph. In a graph, you have what are called nodes and what are called edges. Now, in a graph, you have nodes, which for our purposes are the entities, the subject and the object, and nodes are connected by what you would call edges. The connection between nodes is an edge. The subject, predicate, object, triple, in computer science and information science jargon, is called a labeled edge. And it's a labeled edge because the edge has a label. It's called something. So the node is the entity. And the edge is the connection. So in the Mona Lisa example, what we might have is the following nodes and edges. One node would be Leonardo da Vinci. Another node would be the Mona Lisa. And the edge between them would be labeled creator. Now, again, you can establish a whole network of triples, a whole labeled graph. So let's say, for example, that this node is Lisa del Giocondo, who supposedly is the woman who sat for the painting of the Mona Lisa. So this edge could be labeled subject. I don't know how you would label that edge. I'm not sure if Lisa del Giocondo was Leonardo da Vinci's patron or model or how you would label that edge, but the point is is that you can create a label for that edge. Now, if we add arrows, if we add directionality to these connections, you get what's called a directed graph. In a directed graph, the edges, the connections, the links, whatever you want to call them, have direction. Leonardo da Vinci created the Mona Lisa, not vice versa. Right? That connection has a direction to it. The other edges in this diagram are perhaps not labeled correctly, but the point is, is that you can 
give an edge a label and a direction as appropriate. Now, the web is also a directed graph. Pages, web pages, are nodes. Links are links, edges. And the point is, is that web links, of course, are directed. This page links to that page, but that page doesn't necessarily have to link back. Right? Links on the web are in one direction. You can hit the back button, but that's not the same thing as clicking on a link. Now, instead of web pages, imagine that we're linking between pieces of data. Now, this figure is from a tutorial on linked data that was written in 2007, so it's old in internet years, but it illustrates this feature of linked data very well, so I'm, I'm going to use it anyway. And in this illustration, the main entity is SIGRI. I assume I'm pronouncing that correctly. Now, SIGRI is an instance of the friend of a friend type person. That's F-O-A-F, which we'll come back to later, is friend of a friend, which is a metadata schema for declaring relationships between people. So SIGRI is an instance of the friend of a friend type person. The entity SIGRI has the name Richard Saganiak, and again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and that is a friend of a friend element called name, and the friend of a friend element based near has the value Berlin, which is an entity in DBpedia. But what if you wanted to know more about Berlin, for example? And in fact, there are some recommendations for services that make use of linked data that recommend that when a service sends data to an application about an entity, that that service should also send data about related resources that may be of interest to the user. Now, what additional resources may be of interest to the user is, to be fair, a bit of a judgment call. But let's say, for the sake of this example, that if you're interested in the entity SIGRI, that you're also therefore going to be interested in Berlin. So, the entity Berlin it exists in DBpedia. Now, in DBpedia, the entity Berlin has the property population and the value 3.4 million approximately. And in DBpedia, the entity Berlin has the subject cities in Germany. And SKOS is the Simple Knowledge Organization System, and it's a set of recommendations for the W3C, from the W3C, excuse me, for representing controlled vocabularies. Now, of course, because both of those graphs contained the entity Berlin from DBpedia, you can merge those two graphs because the entity Berlin is the same entity. So you just link up those two graphs. And then, of course, DBpedia's entity Berlin has the subject cities in Germany, but so do other entities in DBpedia have the, the subject cities in Germany. And so you can link up with other graphs about other entities. Now, Remember that RDF is made up of triples, subject, predicate, object, triples. And the subject of one triple can be the object of another triple. And so once you start looking at this as a big picture, you get these very large, potentially very large networks of relationships of triples being created. Right? Leonardo is the creator of the Mona Lisa. 
Sigri is a person. Sigri is based in Berlin. Berlin has population 3.4 million. Berlin has the subject cities in Germany. These other cities have the subject cities in Germany. And you get this large network of relationships between entities growing and growing potentially growing to fill the entire world full of entities. But of course, you would never want a graph that big because for any given metadata schema, you only want to focus on the universe that you're actually interested in. It would get out of control much too quickly otherwise. The fact that this graph is structured, it contains structured data, in this case, structured data from DBpedia. The fact that there is a shared set of entities, a shared set of elements, and agreement on how to declare the properties of those entities using those elements, things like population and subject, that agreement on what the entities are and how to declare their properties allows that integration of graphs to happen. And first of all, this is where the distinction between metadata and structured data gets very fuzzy, but it is also what allows the linking part of linked data to happen. So let's now look at a DBpedia entity in more detail to see how that description and linking is done.